Jay, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So when I started freelancing, I discovered very quickly that JavaScript is actually a marginally important language in the freelance space. So if you're looking to get into freelance development, which means you're going to be working with small clients, small businesses, typically JavaScript is going to be one of the least important technologies in your tool belt. Yep, I know this is heretical for many of the YouTubers out there. How dare you say JavaScript is not important? I didn't say JavaScript is not important. I said JavaScript is not important in the freelance space. Will there be JavaScript when you're building sites or small web apps in freelance? Well, in the freelance context? Yes. How important will it be? Most of the time, not very important. For most small business, they're not going to be using a React. They're not going to be using a Node. They're not going to be using a Angular, that's for sure. They may use a little bit of Vue, but for most small business, it's going to be HTML, CSS, it's going to be Bootstrap, or maybe just vanilla CSS, uh, CSS Grid and Flexbox for layout. And then they're going to be using some backend system, uh, which probably be PHP based, believe it or not. Why? It's just a question of the market. It's a question of the market. It's not a question of making a judgment about the quality of the technology is a question, it's just a, a judgment of what's actually going on in the real world. Anyway, one of the messages of this channel is that you shouldn't be so concerned about what language to learn or what library to learn. It's not as if in your career as a professional, you're going to just do one thing your whole life. It doesn't happen too often. If one thing is consistent about being a developer is you have to expect to pivot, to change, to learn new things on the fly based on the demands of the job. You may actually even working for a company, you may be hired, for example, to write React. And then one day your manager will come in and say, listen, we got this backend system, which is based on uh, Python. So we need you to go in there, learn Python and fix this and this and that. And you're like, oh my God, I got to learn Python. Oh my God. But fortunately, if you're trained properly, you're going to go, okay, I'll learn Python in like three days and then I'll be able to do the work. No big deal. Bob's your uncle. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn JavaScript. You should. In fact, it's part of my foundational training courses, my complete web developer course, HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. You JavaScript is important. Don't get me wrong. But in the freelance context, JavaScript at best will be a syntactic sugar, uh, a peripheral, a marginal technology that you're going to leverage. You may use JavaScript to do some little bit of Ajax, maybe you implement some sort of API, but it's going to be bing, boom, bam, boom, boom. You're going to spend a lot more time on other things than the JavaScript. I can just tell you that from my experience. When I first started freelancing back in the day, I went out there and I realized pretty quickly that JavaScript was, as I just said, marginal in its importance. It's much better off, you're much better off after you learn the basics of the web stack to learn a little bit about WordPress. I know it's not a programming language, but it's a technology, it's a tool in your tool belt. You will have much more use of WordPress in your freelance career as a web developer, web professional. No question about it, if you want the jobs. And because WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, and so many other widely used technologies, uh, widely used by small businesses, because so many of these small businesses use these technologies, and because these technologies are built with PHP, evil PHP, uh, you're better off to learn PHP. So I think that depending on the circumstances, and there's always exceptions, but most, in most situations, you're going to find yourself needing to know PHP more than needing to know uh, JavaScript. So what's my advice? If you want to get into freelance, make sure you know the web stack because the web, when it comes to freelance, it's not going to be about native iOS development or native Android development. It's not going to be about React. It's going to be about the web stack it be about HTML5, CSS3, understanding a bit of Bootstrap, understanding a bit of WordPress, understanding a bit of PHP, and having a, a wider range of skills that you can pivot here, there, and everywhere. The key, though, is to have a good grasp of the fundamentals because what you're going to see 
to open up the job opportunities in the freelance space, you have to be able to pivot pretty quickly. That's the exciting thing about freelancing. You have the freedom to choose the jobs, to choose the technologies to a certain extent that you want to work with. You can reject jobs. If so if you don't like PHP and there's this juicy PHP contract that you just hate PHP, you can just say, I don't want to do it. On the other hand, if you go work for somebody, they may say, hey, listen, uh, buddy, Uncle Steph, you better go do this in uh, this language here. And that's it. You got to do it uh, if you want the job, right? If you're going to be working there. I want to call to your attention the distinction, the difference between an independent contractor and a freelancer. They're kind of related because you're not working for somebody uh, permanently or full time, but they're very different, very different situations. So the contractor is kind of a, a temporary employee, whereas the freelancer, you're much more separate from the businesses that you'd be working with. So let me define that more clearly. If you go in as an independent contractor, typically, well, prior to the pandemic, you would get the contract, they would hire you for three months or six months or maybe a year, and you're not an employee officially. So that has tax implications, depending on where you live. So up in Canada, that means they don't deduct taxes from uh, that the government wants from employees. They just give you your, your pay based on your per day rate, and you have to deal with all the taxes you got to owe the government. But as the contractor, you don't get no benefits, you don't get unemployment, but at the same time, you get paid more, oftentimes significantly more than the full-time employee. As a contractor, though, you will be typically dropped into a role in the business. So you may be hired as a, uh, on a three-month or six-month contract writing React in a team. So you're going to be told, okay, you're going to work on this project here, and this is your role, and this is what you're doing. Here's the standard that we're going to apply, and your job is to build this. So, for example, decades ago, I was hired as a contractor for, for a publicly traded company, and my job was just to build the help system. That's all I did. My, I didn't care about any other aspect of the project. It was so, apparently, it was a high-pressure situation, but for me, it was, like, it was like a walk through the park. All I had to do was take the help file stuff, integrate it within the web app, and it was... That's it. Nothing else concerned me. I got paid very good and it was a good gig. But I was, that was a contracting work. On the other hand, if you're freelancing, if you're freelancing, you uh, typically have a lot more control over what's going on. And you have a lot more and you have to wear many hats. So, for example, I did it my, one of my first freelance contracts where it was uh, a web app. Um, I chose the technology, the back-end technology. I, uh, I, I decided the timeline, when I was going to work, how long things were going to take. Whereas with a contract, when you're a contractor, typically they're going to say, you got to work from this, day, this time to this time. We need to get this out by this date, et cetera, and so forth. When you're a freelancer, there's a lot more flexibility there. So depending if you freelance or do contract work, it's a whole different game in terms of lifestyle. Keep that in mind. So if you're jumping into the freelance game and you happen to love JavaScript, I think you'll find that JavaScript is not nearly as important as it is typically in medium to larger size organizations that will use like a React or uh, an Angular or a Vue or something. Yeah, JavaScript is there but it's not nearly as important as you think it is in the freelance space. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in software development, in coding, freelancing, starting a SaaS business, getting a job. I've been doing this for three decades. So there's an old expression. If only I knew then what I know now. That's the old expression. Ask any old geezer like me. They'll say 100%. So my goal with the mentoring program is to transfer my decades of experience as a developer, as a freelancer, as an entrepreneur to you guys so that you don't have to spend decades learning all this stuff slowly. You can get it from me. You can find links below to all my material and uh, we'll see you in the next live. Code long and profit, my friends.